Hey, what's going on? Dr. Taylor, Spark Chiropractic. Today, I want to talk to you about the shoulder. That's what that says. So, the shoulder the, the shoulder is an incredibly complex joint, and it can be caused by a whole lot of different things. Not it, but its problems can be caused by a whole lot of different things. But I'm telling you right off the bat, the vast majority of shoulder problems that come into this office are not shoulder problems. You feel the pain in the shoulder because of the compensation the shoulder is able to make. But more often than not, the shoulder problem is going to be related to a spine problem. Okay? So, easiest way to understand that, let's cover some anatomy. Here's the base of your head. Here's your spine, right? So, we've got our vertebra in the neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we've got the rest of them going down here in the mid back, the thoracic spine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right there. So then what happens? Then in the thoracic spine, we've got our ribs, like so. We've got 12 of those. I haven't been counting here. And then we've got our shoulder blade. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw it right here, like that. Now, our shoulder blade is just a flat bone that sits on our rib cage, right? But it is anchored by muscles to our spine and to our skull. So we've got muscles going from here up into the head. We've got muscles here into the neck, and then like I said, we've got muscles going to every vertebra halfway through the spine here. And what these things do is they bend, twist, and move the shoulder blade and the scapula as you move your arm. So if we've got our shoulder blade coming out here, and then we've got our arm bone here like that, and then we've got a bunch of other muscles coming through here, anchoring the shoulder blade. On top of this thing, this is our deltoid, right? This is our shoulder muscle. And then we've got our rotator cuff there, 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 and then some on the front. So what's going to happen? You're going to come in here, hey, doc, I can only lift my arm to here. Or it hurts. I can go all the way up, but it hurts if I lift anything more than a marker, right? Can of soup, a baby, something like that. The reason being, this shoulder blade here, when we raise our arm, this shoulder blade should move. This is not a stationary thing. So if we were raising our arm up, the shoulder blade should start to wing out like this, right? It should start to flow like that. That's going to allow us to lift that arm up. But if we've got dysfunction in any of these vertebrae in the spine, and these things start to cause muscle spasms, they're not going to allow that shoulder blade to wing out. They're not going to allow the thing to glide. They're not going to ips, ipso facto, you can't lift your arm. But you're going to come in here and you're going to tell me it's your shoulder. Because that just makes sense, right? If my arm's not going up and my arm's connected here, well, it must be here that's stopping it. No, not really. More often than not, we see a whole bunch of stuff that's just fine with the muscles that actually connect the arm to the shoulder blade. But when we get dysfunction in this mid-back, we get vertebra that are out of alignment, causing these muscle spasms. That freezes that shoulder right there. This thing can't move, right? It can't slide forward and back, it can't wing out, and it can't allow you to lift that arm up. Then what happens, then these muscles start to freak out even more, and then they start to pull on the muscles that are anchored into the skull. Doc, not only can I not lift my arm, I've got this incredible pain right here at the base of my head. They're unrelated. No, they're not unrelated. It all stems from this spot in your back that's stopping that shoulder blade from moving, which is causing all these other muscles to try and compensate for it. Because what happens when we get hurt or when we get injured? Our body tries to protect itself, right? So what does it do if there's an injured joint? It spasms up the muscles around it, so that way that joint can't move further out of place. It can't sustain more injury. So how do we fix all this? Yes, we're going to assess the shoulder, but more often than not, we don't see a whole lot of problems with it. We see the problems in the mid-back. So we do orthopedic exams, we do neurologic exams, we take x-rays so we can see the condition of the spine because to see is to know. If we can't see it, we don't truly know, right? And then when we find these problems, we fix them, adjust the vertebra, that relaxes the muscles, that allows the joints further down the line to move. And this goes with a whole bunch of things. It can go with that. You, if you get that stabbing pain, like right back there, right behind your shoulder blade, right between your shoulder blade and your spine. Just like I said, it'll cause these pains here, pulling on these muscles up in the neck. All this kind of stuff, simply because you've got a couple of vertebrae that are out of alignment in your mid-back. 
and you come in here and you say I've got a shoulder problem, you say I've got frozen shoulder, things like that. Best thing you can do, get your mid back looked at, get this thing assessed because this here, this chunk of vertebra, these 12 vertebra have a tremendous effect on how this thing works. Now, that being said, the shoulder, one of my least favorite joints in the body, second only to the knee. Here's why. We're gonna look at your shoulder blade, right? It's like that. Your shoulder's considered a ball and socket joint, but the thing is, this ball and socket, it's like a freaking golf ball on a tee. It's the world's crappiest ball and socket. It is tiny. So what happens, our body puts down some more tissue here. It's called our labrum, and all it is, it's like the meniscus of the shoulder. It just deepens this socket here to hold this thing in place, this thing being your upper arm. So again, we're looking from behind here. We've got a muscle coming around like that. We've got another one coming around like that. And then on, we're gonna do a little dotted line because this is underneath the shoulder blade, coming around and anchoring here on the front. So what happens, if we lose mobility in the shoulder blade, then the mobility here in this specific joint is going to have to increase more than it necessarily wants to, which is gonna put more stress, tension, and potential damage on this labrum here and this will result in that clicking that some people get because that shoulder comes out of place within that ball and socket joint. But as we know, how do we fix that? We get the shoulder blade moving again. How do we get the shoulder blade moving again? We assess the bones in the mid back. We find the one that's causing trouble because that's the one that's causing these muscle spasms here, which is putting more stress here on the arm. It's literally like, Wherever you have pain, there's never just one cause, one source. In the absence of an accident or an injury, if you've got these things that have been going on for weeks, months, God forbid, even years, there's going to be other things going on around it here. So right here at Aspire Chiropractic with all the athletes we help, with the rugby players, with the MMA fighters, and then, man, with the parents. Because parents have shoulder issues way more than anyone would expect. Why? Because they're parents. What do parents do? They carry their kids and they do everything else. So, if you've got issues going on in your shoulder, if you've got that spot, like I said, right here, it feels like someone is stabbing you with a knife, or that thing right up here that's leading into the base of your skull, or heck, you got that stuff going right in your mid-back. We're ready to help you when you're ready to be your best, naturally. Mm -hmm.